Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Always Online Multiplayer Gaming Podcast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your host for all things multiplayer related. I'm your host, as always, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, and this is episode 493. We're, of course, doing the show live, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb, every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to join us and chime in, chat already, raring to go on some of the topics today. And we've got a lot to cover, so I'm just going to get right to the other host. Welcome, Quintlin Bowers. What's up, Q? Uh, not a lot. Guess we, you know, have actual ending of things happening. <laughs> finally. Finally. Yeah, finally. 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 We can finally. eventually quit talking about it. <laughs> well, I mean, we still got a couple things with the FTC that I'm sure we'll have to report, but I don't anticipate them going anywhere. Oh, no. No, not at this point. Also on the line, the new bridge himself, Troy Blackburn. What's up, sir? Sleepy and have a pounding headache. What a day. What, what a-, a day to be alive. <laughs> so he's just going to take a nap during the cast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just gonna, like, go back to the camera gonna, every so often and the, he's just there, the knocked most out. <laughs> cheerful dude ever. He'll just be like, uh, can I have all my assignments immediately after the show, please? <laughs> hope your headache gets better as the show goes on. We get we do have some good stuff to talk about, so maybe that'll maybe that'll help. Let's get started with the news. Choro dude in chat saying, "What a week, eh? yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, but what a two week, what a two weeks, right? Because we didn't have the show last week. I was traveling. Thank you to Q and Troy for and Matthew for holding down the fort while I was gone uh, Friday and Monday. Had a great weekend with the family in New York. Uh, my son's college like family weekend thing. So that was a lot of fun. No show last week, so we're back this week. And I do have a couple things. You know, one broke." basically the day of the podcast. So we we would have had like initial information. So I'm kind of glad because now we have additional portions of, of what we can see happening going forward because it's over, as Q mentioned. Microsoft now officially merged with Activision Blizzard King. We saw their stock basically get held on a number of trading services late Thursday night. And then Friday morning woke to the news that the merger was complete. Troy, we were right. The CMA said, hey, there's no more need for further review. The proposal you gave us satisfies our needs. There's no need to relitigate this like they thought they might, right? There were initial discussions that they might go into a whole questions phase and stuff. They didn't end up doing that. CMA said, cool, we're good. Ubisoft take care of Microsoft and Activision streaming services. Uh, cloud services here we go and the merger is complete what are your thoughts uh just that it was it was pretty inevitable that it was going to go through eventually uh whether it's a good thing or a bad thing now remains to be seen uh whether monetization gets out of hand in certain things uh whether activision blizzard uh all indications are they're going to kind of be left on their own uh, sort of as an independent studio to work and do things how they want to do them. So we'll see going forward, you know, how that turns out. There's already been some some rumors that there's some heavy monetization coming in something uh, that we're not sure what is coming in and exactly what form it's going to take right now. So it's going to be interesting to see going forward now uh, what this looks like. Q, don't expect leadership changes right away, but they are coming pretty quickly, though. Yeah, so uh, Bobby will be leaving at the end of the year. They they apparently like there's the 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 way it was reported was like they asked him to stay, but he's leaving. Um, the the other really good thing is um, now that this has happened, all the all of like the attempts on Blizzard's behalf to block the unionization and, and everything going on in their offices can't happen because Microsoft, you know like did that whole thing where they're like we we stay out of it you guys can unionize if you want with their entire company right which was part of their trying to kind of yeah make the, the merger the PR spin a little bit to get better. to the merge yeah right but it it does benefit the workers that this is something they're stuck with now so <laughs> Yeah, and so Phil Spencer it. did talk about that and a few other topics we're going to mention in here 
that, uh, yeah, he just kind of reaffirmed their neutral stance, you know, uh, to that, even post-merger. So, yeah, hopefully it's a net good across the board for employees, right? Like, that's the, the number one thing I'm sure most of us want taken care of and taken care of immediately. Any remaining toxic culture inside Activision Blizzard needs to be eradicated. Now, will that happen to the extent that some may want it to? I'm not entirely sold, Troy, although Phil Spencer does a great job of presenting the, like, I'm the CEO for gamers persona, right? He does a fantastic job presenting that. Microsoft as a whole, not just its Xbox or gaming division, but as a whole, has has, has had its own run-ins with toxic uh, and harassing cultures too. Maybe not to the extent publicly that Activision Blizzard King has had, but it's had a few run-ins. Hopefully, this is a net positive at the end of the year for employees when Bobby leaves and, you know, who comes in after is kind of the question, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's definitely a seat to fill, uh, especially if they're going to let them sort of, uh, you know, operate on their own as much as possible you know, you know they're definitely going to need to put somebody in that leadership position and it'd be interesting to see who steps up and who takes over there bobby codex no. go ahead what they may do is restructure activision blizzard slash king in in some way once they have them in there and it may end up being smaller groups again right like instead of it just being the entire thing you that you may be at, we may be eventually able to be like oh the Activision portion of Microsoft the Blizzard portion of Microsoft instead of the entire empire yeah. being one whole thing under it it would also make it easier later on if they decided they wanted to sell pieces of it off it is a kind of weird the way you're right Q in in Bobby's statement to uh, the public on the Activision Blizzard newsroom site. It, how it's almost like, well, you Phil asked me to stay, but it, this is the way he words it. I have long said I'm fully committed to helping with the transition. Phil has asked me to stay on as CEO of ABK, reporting to him, and we have agreed that I will do that through the end of 2023. So basically two months. <laughs> we both we both look forward to working together on a smooth integration for our teams and players. And while I feel like the way that's worded is kind of like the the way you you got the impression cue where, yeah, Phil asked me to stay. Uh, I'm going to help transition. I, I have a feeling it wasn't as, hey, would well, you I stay think, as Bobby's making it? I think the key in there may be the reporting to Phil Bart. And I mean, Bobby's not been reporting to anybody but shareholders for years. Right. So he may have looked at that and went, yeah, I don't really want to have to report to someone else. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I just got hundreds of millions of dollars when this closed. I'm going to go find ways to spend it. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already super rich. I'm now even super, super rich. I'm mega rich. I'm uh, going to go buy another yacht and go harass yeah. some whales. I wonder if they'll make another baseball movie I can go be in. Um, not right now. Not right now. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe in a bit. Like there's some, I do, there's movement on that front too. I do wonder, to, like talking about the the unions and stuff. So it, it it is it isn't happening yet, right? But SAG is in their process of voting on. Um, striking video game companies. Well, they already completed and, the vote. Like they but already have Activision, authorization to strike. Activision Blizzard was one of the companies on the list. I don't think Microsoft was. So I wonder if this shift will change that. Maybe, maybe. I mean, there is uh, there is another set of talks ready to kick off. They, yeah, they, don't, have, yeah. they don't have the exact date um, on when. Let me, I on. think I SAG's bigger this. concern right now is still. The oh, yeah, no doubt. People. No doubt. Here we go. Uh, I have the list of companies right here that would be impacted by a SAG after a video game strike. Now, I could be wrong. I just don't remember Microsoft being on there. Yeah, uh, we've got Activision, uh, Blind Light, D3, 
Disney Character Voices Inc., Electronic That's Arts Production shocking. Inc., Epic Games, Formosa Interactive, Insomniac Games, Take Two Productions, Voice Work Productions, and WB Inc. WB Games Inc. Now again, they already voted to approve the strike against the video game companies. They're not on strike yet because they are going to yeah. try another round of talks after the previous ones broke down. There's no date for those yet, but as of two or three days ago, both parties did say, yes, we're going to try to sit down and, and hammer this out once again. So there may still be movement on at least the video game portion of that front. Troy, I want to know and the, what, what you want to see now. And let's set aside like you know, better employee treatment and everything. Let's just assume that everybody watching this show is a decent person because you are all lovely and you want that. So let's set that aside as just a given. On the games front, as a gamer, what do you want to see out of this? We already know that Phil Spencer said, hey, don't expect Activision Blizzard properties on Game Pass until sometime at the earliest in 2024. The, the merger just took too long and there's too much work for us to do that. It's not coming anytime this year. And he hasn't like queued up or teased any specific titles. He's also on the on board for revisiting older properties and IPs that Activision Blizzard King owns that may not have gotten love recently, I mean, including new properties, right? When's the last not World of Warcraft, Warcraft thing you saw, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as far as gaming, but then also going back and visiting other properties. What do you want to see? as a as a gamer out of this merger i'm looking forward to hopefully some of the older properties coming back and getting some love and getting some new versions or updated versions at least and done the right way this time not not warcraft 3 reforged or whatever the hell that that mess was called uh i'm looking forward to you know, things coming out on game pass will be interesting seeing what comes out on game pass once those do start coming out uh at what rate they start coming out and you know going forward seeing things like what if in the future world of warcraft shows up on game pass yeah Troy dude throwing that, that in chat now think saying you know i think it will end up on game pass eventually it's an interesting thought experiment right when you have two subs one would essentially eat the other in some way whether it would be mm -hmm. like a couple extra bucks on your game pass sub to to have the the World of Warcraft subs or or some other you know deal quote unquote deal to make it happen, uh, I can see benefits and I can see cons to it. Yeah, for sure, and it, it's definitely a way. If there was ever going to be a conversation like a serious conversation about World of Warcraft going free to play, this would be a very obvious first step. Uh, instead of just straight going free to play, is put it on Game Pass and see what the player base looks like then. Of course, there's always the Game Pass debate, too, on whether that's good or bad for sales of games. And we'll talk about that more on tomorrow's uh, Gaming Gumbo. So make sure to join us for that. I'm going to give you some IPs, Q, and some thoughts around the Internet that you may not know Activision Bl Blizzard King owns or remember that they own. I'm not going to touch any. <laughs> I'm not going to touch any of King's mobile shit. I don't care. Uh, we're, we're talking about Activision Blizzard properties here. <laughs> The internet, at least, uh, you know, fans of this particular game would like to see maybe some new push on Heroes of the Storm. Do you think it's likely? Hmm. I mean, I guess anything is possible. The and maybe they'll have a bit more freedom. I do know, right that. Part of Metzen being back is to work on the Warcraft stuff. Yeah, everything not just World to, of. Right stuff. So it is possible that that maybe they could they could do something with it. it I think it would because I do know a lot of people who really really love that game, but at the same time they were doing and and they kind of had the same issue with you know with like Hearthstone and, and 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 Overwatch and stuff like they they were really trying to push the esports side of it and <laughs> esports is really hard even even you know Riot is like man this is just not working out the way we thought it would over time right like everybody back in the day was looking at starcraft and its immense popularity in south korea and thinking we could do that and it just 
it's not working out entirely the same for everybody. And so maybe if they just came back to it in a in a different way and, and their their company focus was not so heavily invested into the esports side right. of it and trying to do all of that monetarily. May yeah, you know, they could come up with something good and just let the fans handle the esports stuff and and figure that stuff out themselves instead of trying to monetize it and you know build an yeah. entire thing around it. Troy, we we also see like obviously cries for you know improvements to World of Warcraft, improvements to Overwatch Two, improvements to Hearthstone, improvements to Diablo. You know. Try tearing down some of the the monetization and maybe doing some stuff with Overwatch too that isn't just hey here's new seasonal buy us content but maybe taking that IP or World of Warcraft or the Warcraft IP and going in other directions with it right not just improvement of the existing big IPs Call of Duty in the library but hey let's see more Warcraft games even if they aren't RTS let's you know have a thrall open world game you know and insert whatever pipe dreams here mm -hmm. so in addition to those though uh, chat already mentioned, Chirac mentioned one that I absolutely would love to see uh, something done with, and that's Prototype. I would absolutely love to see them do something with Prototype. Here's a few others you may not remember. Here's a blast from the past for some of you. Gabriel Knight. Activision owns the Gabriel Knight franchise. They also own Phantasmagoria. So a couple interesting things that could be die. Yeah, right, Q? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, and then you step aside to like the peripheral stuff. They obviously they do a lot with Guitar Hero and, and have for years. I, everybody's got that shit in their basement. Uh, <laughs> they they have the uh, the Skylanders stuff. So you could do some stuff there. That was kind of an IP that got really big and then was shut down maybe earlier than some people anticipated, although... <laughs> Activision did kind of do what Activision did with Guitar Hero and stuff like that, where it just got oversaturated so fast. Uh, here, here's a fun one. Crash Bandicoot. So Microsoft now owns what was the de facto Sony mascot for years. Not official Sony mascot, but Crash Bandicoot now under the Microsoft uh, umbrella. So that's kind of funny. Geometry Wars, Gun... Uh, Hexen, we've seen Phil Spencer wear Hexen shirts and things like that. So maybe, maybe King's Quest, the Lost Vikings, Troy is one. I definitely, you, they have to do something <laughs> with the Lost Vikings. <laughs> they have to. That, that, that would be a fun one to see something done with something, something new and kind of going forward with, you know, something new and different, something modern in, in the, uh, the Lost Vikings universe would be super fun. Uh, they do have a, a number of other shooters now, like how much they would actually invest in those eh, with Call of Duty, unless you're going to do something very different uh, than than that type of game. I, it's unlikely I think we'll see anything out of like SWAT or um, Soldier of Fortune was another one. While those can get a little more narrative compelling uh, than Call of Duty has in the past, I, I don't know how much they would sink into basically making another shooter even if it was more narrative driven than multiplayer or whatever they have tony hawk's pro skater i mean there's a lot of stuff that we kind of forget that where they were sitting in the activision vaults and phil spencer on board with you know doing them the right way he did talk about making sure that they do them justice because there's a lot of nostalgia there and not just put it out to make a quick buck again Phil Spencer, very good at the PR of running a gaming company and, and appearing to be for the gamers, by the gamers type deal. Uh, but not all the decisions have always gone that way. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to see where it goes. But it really, I think, now and others think, uh, according even some financial sites, that this really does now put the pressure on Sony, even if they were kind of like just avoiding the pressure already. They already picked up Bungie. But I do think, Troy, there is a bit of pressure to pick up somebody else at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's time to uh, go into competition mode, right? Got to You got to keep up with the Joneses, man. We do still have the FTC challenge. Uh, obviously, nothing could be done to stop the merger on that front. But expect that challenge, although I don't expect it to go anywhere 
really you would have to prove that they're a monopoly, which they aren't, or you would have to prove that it's such an anti-consumer thing that the government should not allow it to happen and would force them to break the companies apart again. That seems unlikely given that that was primarily their argument when they were seeking an injunction uh, to stop the merger and they couldn't get the injunction. So probably a, a hard road to hoe. We'll see what happens with it, if anything. Let's talk about a couple of weird things. Epic Games is being a... A little weird, gang. A little weird. You mean weirder than usual? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, that's exactly, Q, what I mean. A little weirder than usual. Remember, Epic Games just announced layoffs, right? And uh, then they were, you know, talking about you know, poor-mouthing everybody and why they had to do this. And, well, now they want to give developers a 100% revenue share not the 88 12 that they they do 100% of revenue if you bring over older games bring over your older games troy we'll give you 100% of the revenue for 6 months then it'll go to 88 12 while it's kind of a brilliant like marketing thing, right? Like it's it's just it's like financing, right? Six months no interest financing, Q. Come buy a new car. All right, cool. I'll come buy a new car. Six months, I'm gonna give you all the money your game makes, and then it's eighty eight twelve instead of seventy thirty, like on some other platforms. Like from a PR side, I totally get it, but it's also you really for it to be beneficial for Epic, you have to hope that those games coming over result in the sale of something else on the Epic Game Store, right? Otherwise, for six months, they're absorbing the infrastructure costs of getting all these games on the platform, distribution, playing, downloading, installing, all that stuff, uh, with no gain. And for the companies bringing them over, Troy, it's a little, little dicey because there's some requirements on there where if you have more than one game, they want all of them. It's, it's a little... It's a little all or nothing. They're like, bring all your old shit or don't bring any shit. Yeah. Yeah. Bring bring it, three or more for sure. <laughs> Is it exclu exclusive to them too? You bring it to our platform and you can't put it on anybody else's? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I don't think so, but let me check. I don't remember. Because... That. Who can participate? Which products are eligible? Can I release it now and then apply later? Any product that has been previously released and is currently live on another third-party PC store or included in a third-party subscription service available on another third-party PC store, a.k.a. Game Pass. Uh, if you have three or more products in a third-party store or third-party subscription, you must bring at least three of them to the Epic Game Store. If you have less than three, you must bring all of them to the Epic Game Store. Uh, is it exclusive though? Well, it can't be exclusive if it's already on other. Like they they can't ex expect you to remove your game from Game Pass to bring it to Epic Games, right? We are talking about Epic. Uh, uh, yeah, there there is that. <laughs> I, I I don't see anything at least that uh, is flagging that right now. Um, as as part of their, it's certainly not in their FAQ. And yeah, I would have to imagine there at least has to be some wiggle room because you might have contracts that, you know, you have to complete. Like you have to be free on Game Pass for X period of time, right? We, you know, Microsoft gave you this money to have it be part of Game Pass for a year or for two years or whatever. Um, so you would have to at least give me the ability to serve out my contract. I don't think they could force exclusivity on it. But yeah, this is the company that uh, isn't doing well financially. Well, I I don't understand what like what they think this is achieving if they don't get straight exclusivity and a demand that those people put all of their games on as they make more games. But like, there has to be a catch somewhere. Well, I mean, I it's it's a long term play. But what's weird is Epic Game Store isn't new. 
right? These are the types of things, at least in my PR, and if I was trying to spin up some hype and get some clients and, you know, do the whole PR thing, Troy, I, I kind of go, okay, I'm going to give them all the money, but I, that gets their games on my platform. People who want those games uh, will come and buy them. That developer already being on my platform is also much more likely to put their next products on my platform yes. because they're already here. Uh, so why not put it on my platform? I'm giving a better revenue split to the developers. In fact, I'm giving them all the revenue for the first six months and then a better split than Steam or these uh, some of these other platforms. Uh, and maybe those customers that have never used the Epic Game Store use it very infrequently, see this game come, cool, I'm going to get it on the Epic Game Store. And by the way, oh, here's games like it. I'm going to buy two of those too. Like it all makes sense to me as an advertisement and a drum up of business. But not for a game store that's as established as the Epic Game Store is at this point, unless it's like we really need this thing to grow. It's just not growing, which maybe there's the argument for based on the way they reported their layoffs. Yeah, to, to, to me, it screams that we're just not growing the way that we wanted to and that we're, we're looking to try to expand in any way that we possibly can at this point. And, I mean, sixteen percent of their staff is what they cut. Remember, it wasn't small. Yeah, yeah, and it, that's like nine hundred people in it, isn't that what? The yeah, it was just under nine hundred. Yeah, like that was a lot of folks um, who who were looking for jobs. So the you other know, thing but, that they did was the the whole thing with Rocket League, where they're basically gearing it so that the, it becomes part of their NFT oh. related stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, so it might be, we might circle time. back to that one in the weekly bombs. We might. Let's. <laughs> but no, I'm saying this is all about the same time that all of this is happening. The layoffs, that switch. And it did say in the thing that it was to, because it's not just Rocket League that they're doing it to. They want all, like, all the games under the Epic umbrella to be able to integrate that stuff. So I wonder if this is maybe a way to get these... I don't know, companies in to try to engineer that kind of thing to give them more spaces. To yeah. Do that by the way, to refer to it as an NFT is, is a bit, um, and well, a, I a said bit, NFT. It, it, yeah. It's, it's not an NFT. So if you were, if you missed, don't, you didn't miss rocket league going into NFTs. That's not how it's happening. What is happening in rocket league is that come December 5th, player to player trading will be shut off. Uh, and that's a huge part of the game for many, many, many players and many, many Rocket League content creators is, you know, hey, I'm going to start with this decal and try to trade up with a bunch of people to get whatever. You know, there's content based on that and a, a player economy based on that uh, trading items. Now, they're going to do away with that, which means your entire item library, all of your cars and decals and toppers and boosts all of that stuff is yours and yours only you can't trade it you can't give it to anybody that means if you want something that's cash shop based where historically you might have been able to trade troy for it now you without spending cash because you had something troy wants so yeah troy's gonna spend eight bucks on those wheels that you want trade them to you for the the boost that he wants uh you're not gonna be able to do that it forces you to buy it from the cash shop if it's a cash shop item. What it also, uh, their their big pitch for it is that it puts it in line with the other Epic games. And this is what you were mentioning, Q. In right. that's, that's the, the part I'm saying is NFT-ish. Is yeah. The, it's, the moving the vehicle from Rocket League to... To go give it away in Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. To entice right. you to go play Fortnite uh, and go through their battle pass and maybe get uh, a different car. So, uh, or a code for a car, right? Like the NFT aspect of it is like, do they just give away the items and it's on your Epic account and you can use it in a different game automatically like you would if it were an NFT? Uh, or is it going to be like, hey, you got a code, do this in Fortnite, get a code for this in Rocket League? Um, and force those players that want that thing to not just sit back and wait for Troy, who plays Fortnite, to get it and say, you don't play Rocket League, Troy, give me that car. No, I got to go and, and play it too, even if I'm not all that invested in Fortnite. Very, P 
people were all kinds of pissed off. So Epic is being very, very weird now. Very, very weird <laughs> right now. <laughs> so is Pantheon. Oh, Lord. This could have been the entire show. This really could have been the entire show. I'm not going to let it be the entire show. I wrote an article. I have, you know, I'm a big fan of Pantheon. I've been looking forward to Pantheon. I've been supportive, even though it's an extremely slow development process. Of And their initial Kickstarter was, of course, a fiasco and all that stuff back then. But, you know, it's only been nine, almost ten years now. Um, the short, if you want why, the long version of why I'm concerned, go read the article. Yup, I'm now officially worried about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Um, some great comments on it, too, and all that good stuff. The short version, so that you know what we're talking about here, because I actually want to take this conversation in a different direction than Pantheon itself. They've advertised since July they were going to go into 24-7 testing. That made a lot of MMO players and people watching Pantheon very happy. But there was a caveat that they said, hey, it's going to be like a special mode. And we'll have more details in September after we've allowed people into the mode to get some feedback. We'll share details. Those details still aren't up on what the mode is. From testers who, this is where I would like to take the topic, have leaked or violated their NDAs in one way or another. People are finding out that that mode is basically like a one-hour survival game with uh, either a PvE or a PvE server. And you, it's, it's not the MMO. It's not like a condensed portion of the MMO. It's an entirely different experience that has some minor progression things built in and will be expanded over time. I can't speak to it personally. I just don't know. Nor if I did... Would I? Because that would, of course, violate the NDA. To get into this testing, you obviously have to buy a bundle. And there are rumors that in the future there may be some other monetization tied to this. And there was communication, allegedly from Visionary Realms, uh, to players, to backers. To We're not exactly sure who all the communication was addressed to. Um, about addressing the rumors of monetizing Pantheon 24-7. So you've got people upset at the mode not being clearly explained before you may have decided to pledge, seeing that they were going to 24-7 testing, and then potential monetization. Uh, and Visionary Realms hasn't really talked about this publicly in a public forum yet. However, they do plan to soon. Um... I'll just leave it at soon because I don't want to step on any. They gave us a narrower time frame when I talked behind the scenes to them about it, but I don't want to step on any toes in case things get delayed there. I don't want to make life hard for Visionary Realms, even though I personally am worried about the game. The communications that we've seen have been very Troy. Again, we got it. We got to be honest. They were leaked, right? Uh, we initially did not report them. We received the information from a couple different sources over a week ago, uh, and I had you look into it to see if there was a bit more information public. There wasn't, so we skipped it. Then more broke. The communication was very, yeah, we, we, we know, and we're, we need to, uh, crowdfunding is kind of drying up. We could definitely release Pantheon on the path that we're on, it would just take a very, 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 very long time. And by releasing this different game mode, uh, we might be able to attract um, monetization from players and a potential investor that would help us expedite the production of the MMO. However, promotion and advertising for the MMO is going to cease for the rest of the year. And into 2024, we'll see it again, they say, at some point in that time. What's your initial reaction, Troy? As somebody who I know was looking forward to Pantheon too. Yeah, in a in a I would like to see, you know, new MMOs kind of way. I can't say that I was like super following it. I didn't back it or anything like that. Um, it always makes me nervous because you got you've got like the Chronicles of Illyria 
crap where they <laughs> where they spun off a different game mode and it was almost like they would rather work on that than what they had promised in the Kickstarter. Um so you know stuff like that always makes me nervous when they're when they're trying to spin off game modes. And and you would think if there was enough of the MMO done for twenty four seven testing that, you know, that's when they would open it and you would actually be testing the MMO. Uh, apparently we're not that far along where they have enough of the MMO for 24 seven testing, even a small chunk of it. So they've created this, this spinoff and, and, and now I'm nervous about the future monetization of the spinoff. Where does the spinoff go? Does this take, does this take up their time? Uh, are they trying to make it a thing or is it genuinely, you know, we're just trying to gather information and test, you know, systems and things like that. Um, I yeah. don't think that that would be 24 seven testing for a spinoff game mode, if you were trying to test systems and things like that, I think that you would have a small chunk of your actual MMO ready to go for something like that. And Q, and they if, are you, if you're ready for that, then they don't put it out yet. And Q, they are saying, at least in this alleged communication from Visionary Realms, they do point out that, like, hey, this is about 5% of our time. The other 95% is on spinning up content ps you know the old everquest landmark and next thing anything we create in 24 7 is viable for use in the mmo portion of it too like and by the way this isn't we can't make the mmo this is we would like to not be 140 when we release the mmo uh and maybe this gives us a path uh to getting there a little faster than some of our other plans but not what pantheon mmo fans probably wanted to hear and it doesn't help that it's still all unofficial, right? It, no, and the thing is, is like that, that are, I mean, I don't know, get, I guess maybe it could work that way. But when you're like, well, this one thing that we're working on and, we, you know, we've been working on, we don't want to, you know, be dead by the time it comes out. So we're going to do something else. <laughs> yeah, and we've seen that, as Troy pointed out, we've seen the path with other games, too. I just... I like you're literally breaking off even if it's just five percent even if it's just five percent you're breaking off five percent of your manpower to do another thing that could or could not be used in what's supposed to be the bit of you know the project right yeah and I'm all for like trying new things and stuff and everything else and whatever but like that argument to me doesn't make sense the we're breaking off some people over here because you know we want to get to the end of the, the big project faster but we may not be using any of what we do over here in the big project so i like it does not make sense yeah and then you have the like troy what if what if the game mode is good, like, or ends up moving in a good direction where somebody does want to invest in it, where they're like, no, 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 I don't want to invest in your MMO. I want you to keep, <laughs> like, <laughs> even if it works, it still kind of can maybe put you in an awkward spot mm -hmm. where your investor's like, no, I want to invest in what you've started here with 24-7. This is a neat game mode that I think could go in some cool directions. I don't want to like, invest in the MMO. <laughs> yeah, like like Fortnite. Uh, right. if you, if, if for, if it's hard for some of the kids to remember nowadays, but Fortnite was not always a battle royale. Uh, nope. Nope. So refreshing my memory here, because we know I have a bad one. Pantheon is Lord British, right? Or uh, is no, that no, 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 no. Okay, because no, no. I was about to say, with, with that game, like... All, all oh, of the no. emails we had gotten on those, right? That particular game, we would get an email every Friday for whatever was happening. And it would literally be the same email we got the week before with like maybe a thing added and, and, and no. one thing subtracted or something. So I just, I needed to remember. No, Pantheon, uh, Visionary Realms was um, Brad McQuaid. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that he was the founder uh, and obviously from EverQuest and Vanguard and, you know, his storied history, uh, rest his soul. Right. right. Well, there was this this entire thing, right, of like for a year or so of big name MMO related people kickstarting them. So keeping track of all of them at this point is. <laughs> so here's the, the, the piece of this that I want to talk about. And, and we may circle back to this for the, the question of the week. Uh... I've seen feedback on not only my article, but other websites' articles. I know massively 
Um, I was talking to somebody on Reddit about my article. They linked me to a piece that Massively had done talking about the leak, and so I went and read theirs. And I have to believe that at least there's some overlap in some of the sources. Uh, I may have some extra ones that they don't. They may have some extra ones that I don't. But I have to believe the way certain communication was sent to parties that there was at least some overlap in in our our sources. Um, should should sites like ours, where we actually cover news, right, updates, actual news, and yes, we have our editorial stuff. Like my article is clearly a feature editorial, not a news piece, uh, and is labeled as such. We do the first looks and the opinion-based stuff, but we also cover news. We're not, you know, Jim's YouTube channel where I could just go and opine on anything the way I want, right? There's a clear delineation between what is news and what any of us put out as opinion pieces or our thoughts on things. Should news outlets such as ours and bigger ones, uh, cover leaks, Q. Should they, when there are leaks like this, should they be covered? There's a violation of an NDA here. No doubt. It's, now I don't know the terms of their NDA and how much they may be violating, right? Is pulling a message from Discord and sending it to somebody a violation of the NDA that you won't talk about the beta testing you're in and the game content? Like, I don't know the extent of any Pantheon NDA. I'm not under one, so I can't tell you what is or is not covered. But let's just say an NDA was violated here by more than one person. Should sites like ours or IGN or the big dogs, should you cover stuff like that publicly? So on a personal level, I personally don't like covering leaks or, you know, data scraping or any like i i just personally don't but i feel like if there's enough like if you can verify enough of the information in some way and be like well yeah this is a legit thing and not just some dude on reddit posting something and saying oh yeah i work for whoever you know because we do get a lot of that too yeah. as well right oh, yeah. like oh sources me i work for them or or whatever it is and it's like yeah but how do we know that what you're saying is like legitimate um but i i feel like there's like somewhat of a of an obligation at that point to be like well this is a thing that's happening and you know we know that it's true but like I said, on a personal level, I I just I I prefer not to. But Troy, that's just Troy. Where do you fall on it? I think in situations like this, I think we have an obligation to report because what we had was uh, tipsters coming in, feeling that they had either been deceived or that other people could be deceived by uh, by a misleading of of PR that they were getting into an MMO that they were going to pay because you do have to pay to get in testing for an MMO and that's not what was happening. They were paying to get into a testing for like a one hour survival type deal, which wasn't what they thought they were getting into. So yeah. And so visionary, I like, to, I be, like, like, like to be fair, visionary realms is post about 24 seven did kind of it. The way it described it was, this was a different game mode. It was a special mode with some progression built in, but to your point, it was not clear uh, and they were going to make it clear what this game mode did in September, but they did not do that yet. Mm -hmm. um, they did not make it clear that, hey, if you are expecting to play a piece of our MMO, don't buy this. You know, we'll explain more about what the game mode is in September, October, whenever. But if what you're looking for is two zones and a dungeon MMO testing, don't buy this. You know, they, they weren't expressly clear besides saying, hey, this is uh, different. So... Here, here's kind of we always do due diligence. Uh, and Tori says, "Is it if it's newsworthy enough?" Mm. I always personally run into the danger there because I hate clickbait, and I will t fully admit to our own detriment on MMOBomb.com, we avoid clickbait titles. Do we try to make them a little enticing, a little make you want to click on it? Yes. 
do we put titles up that clearly do not relate or don't relate in the way we're presenting them to the article? No, we just don't do it. Would we have more viewers and clicks? Yes, we absolutely would. We what absolutely what would. we do do is go, oh, this thing is coming soon, and then put the actual date in the article. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, is it newsworthy? So here... Here's the way I always treat them. And it's generally what, you know, Q and I have done on Game Breaker when we work together on stuff like this. We will dig into it. Can we get more publicly available information that validates what we're getting behind the scenes? Um, and sometimes we can, in which case it's then turns into, do we need the leak to report on this? We may have other publicly available stuff that we can do. If it breaks down, and that's what happened in this case, right? We did investigations. We decided not to write a piece. About four or five days later, I get another piece, and I'm like, okay. And there's nothing publicly for me to go on uh, to validate it. I reach out to Visionary Realms, which is what happened here. And I said, hey, gang, getting some rumors about 24-7, getting some rumors about potential monetization of 24-7, would love to have a little interview with you. We can do it via video. We can do it via emailed questions. Whatever works best for your team. Love to give you a chance to answer some questions in a public forum about this information that is leaking out as we speak. And they replied saying, hey, uh, we're actually going to speak publicly about this. Again, I'll insert soon. Um, and so we'll hold off on an interview. Once we've said our public piece about it, if you feel you still would like an interview, we'll be happy to get that scheduled. Totally reasonable reply from Visionary Realms. We're going to talk soon. Read it. If you still want to interview, let me know. Totally reasonable. So I replied, cool, that sounds great. No problem. When you guys make your statements or whatever, if we want an interview, I'll let you know. In the meantime... I'm going to send you the communication that I'm seeing leaked. Can you simply confirm if this was, if this is legit? Did your team send it? Because the communications had a, an employee's name on it, attached to it. Can you just verify the authenticity of this? I'm in the middle of writing up a piece. Can you verify the authenticity of this? They sent back a very pithy reply, which I did not put in my piece because it wasn't a good look from a PR person, and I'm gonna, I would say that to their face. They have always been very gracious and very kind with their time, uh, and I appreciate that, but this email was, it should, not have, it should not have had send hit on it. It just shouldn't have. They didn't swear or anything. Don't, don't read too much into it. It just was pithy and... And I, so I said, okay, wait a minute, gang, I'm just asking you whether this is legit or not. That's it. Are you unwilling to confirm or deny that right now? And they never replied. The conversation stopped. That See, that's not a good look at all. And, and I, I can kind of understand that they're probably getting from other sites that operate the way we do instead of people who just run with whatever's dropped on Reddit or Facebook as uh, Churro Dude is saying, by the way, we, we typically don't go to Facebook to get information. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, but uh, yeah, so, you know, instead of people that are just running with what's dropped on Facebook or Reddit or whatever, um, people who are actually trying to figure out what's going on that, that, you know, they may be inundated with requests like that, but it's still kind of, if, if nothing yeah. else, they could have sent out a form email to everybody who was asking, just put you on all, all on the list and be like, here's the deal, or, or here's the answer to your yeah. questions and be done with it. And and that would have, you know, that would have worked. Yeah. And, and Troy, it does, obviously, it puts the developer in a very weird spot, right? Information leaked, somebody violated, violated an NDA. Now you're being asked to confirm whether this is yours or not. Well, you didn't intend for it to be publicly consumed to begin with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now like you're being asked to confirm whether you sent this thing that you weren't. But here's my thing. You already knew it was out. 
I'm reaching out to you ahead of print to say, I'd like to have your side of things here because this doesn't look good. I can understand some criticism. You're not ready to talk about it yet. You're going to do so soon. Cool. Can you confirm if this is real? At that point, you really have to, as a PR person, instead of the pithy reply I got, you need to do one of two things. One, if it's not yours, you tell me it's not yours. In which case, I ain't writing a piece. Period. Right? Mm -hmm. You have denied that it is yours because it is not yours. You got to tell me the truth, by the way. You can't lie and say it's not yours. <laughs> In which case, there's no peace. Oh, okay. I'll wait to see what you guys say publicly. And then I might write in that piece that prior to you know VR saying this stuff, there was this thing. We reached out. They said it wasn't there. So we waited for their official announcement. The second option is to, if, you, if you're not ready to like sit down and talk about it, right? is to say, you know what? Yes, that is our communication. But we feel like it is missing a massive amount of context around why that communication was sent and who it was sent to. And we'd really appreciate talking to you a bit more before you publish your piece. Can you give us a couple of days to get together? Like, obviously, it's them PR damage control at that point. And I mm. can read the email and recognize that that's what it is. But at least there's a conversation. Yes, it's it's ours. But we feel there's a lot of context missing. We'd like to talk to you before you publish a piece uh, on this. But we're not ready to do that. Can we talk Tuesday or Wednesday of next week after we've put our thing up? You know, whenever they were going to put it up. Um, no, they didn't commit the Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. I'm being hypothetical there. Like, those are your only two options from a PR standpoint, right? Like, you you can't... <laughs> Pithy commented. I said, look, I'm just looking for confirmation. They went dark. I was like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, you, and, and at that point, you can assume you know why they went dark, because That's... it was their communication. Because if it wasn't their communication, it would have been real easy to say, no, nah, man, that wasn't us. And that's exactly what I said when somebody said uh, on the, somebody posted the article on Reddit, which was very cool and kind. Thank you, by the way. Um, and I chatted with a few people there because they were like, somebody was like, well, they don't want to respond to leak stuff. And somebody else chimed in and was like, if it's not yours, you say it's not yours. If it's yours and you need to put a PR spin on it or whatever, you work with the person that's talking to you. To see if you can come to some type of understanding. Hey, don't cover this yet. We'll give you more context and we'll do an interview with you so that we can give you that context and the readers the context. You know, is do something. Um, we're not unreasonable. We've done that before where we get a story, Troy, and we reach out to the last time. I don't remember what story it was, but the last time I remember doing this for something pretty big was with Riot Games. And I reached out to Riot Games and I said, here's here's a copy. Like, I sent them ahead of time what we were going to be writing. It was already ready to go. And I said, I'd love to have some comments before I roll with this. And they said, we're not, we, we can't do that today. You know, would you hold the piece till tomorrow? And we'll, you can send over some emailed questions and you can add them to the piece then. You, you know what? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll hold this till tomorrow. Here's some questions. Answer them. Um, we're professionals. Like, <laughs> that's... Mm. That's the way it goes. But to just go dark, Troy. <laughs> if there, there's two sides to every story and we want both sides, we always want both sides. We, we want to hear what the developers have to say, what the producers have to say and, and, and see, is, is there, you know, is there a different spin on it than what we're getting from, from tipsters or leaks or things like that? You know, how legit is it? You know, there, there there's the truth is always in the middle somewhere. Right. And you got to find that middle point. We'll see. Soon, gang. Soon. Soon. By the way, if you're a Roblox employee, you now have to go back to work. I wrote this up late last night. Uh, three out of five days of your work week in their San Mateo, California offices, even if that means you have to relocate there to do so because you were hired as a remote worker in some other state. And if you can't do so, here's a severance, or you choose not to do so, here's a severance, you're done. You have till January, mid-January to make that decision, and then mid-April will be your last day if you decide not 
to make that migration. Because, of course, Q, it's for collaborative reasons. Yes, because we haven't been collaborating for well over a decade from very different states. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple updates coming. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, first, updates and new games. We've got... Um, I'm going to jump here. Uh, where Where is my... Where's my link? <laughs> oh, where is it? Did I did I skip this topic? <laughs> oh no, there it is. Seekers of Skyvale. Yeah, I'm gonna jump ahead a few. Uh, Seekers of Skyvale, a fantasy extraction RPG, taking signups for closed alpha PvPVE. I don't I don't know, Troy. It looks kind of interesting, but I feel like this is gonna be more your cup of tea, right? Because you're a MOBA MOBA guy, and it's got that kind of like isometric MOBA control scheme going on. Yeah, it, it looks very like MOBA gameplay with some, you know, different twists and turns thrown in there. Sort of a PvPV extraction sort of shooter thing. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see uh, if it turns out to be anything worth checking out. Uh, I know you had things like Evercore Heroes that was trying to do something different with yeah. sort of the MOBA genre. And, uh, you know, for them out. right now, they're in the middle of uh, trying to rework that and and make something out of it because it didn't quite pan out the first time around. So, you know, it's, it's always interesting to see what we talk about all the time. We want to see new spins on, on existing models. So, you know, I'm always willing to check out something new and different. If, you know, MOBA gameplay with a different spin sounds interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be uh, our cup of tea, Q, so we'll probably just let Troy I'm just amused that you guys are like, it seems kind of mobile-like, when the description of the game is that it's a combination of Escape from Tarkov, Diablo, oh, yeah. and League of Legends. Oh, yeah. It seems yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of mobile-like. Well, yeah, that, that was the part that I didn't get, though. I was like, where's the Tarkov coming in here? <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe in the but... loot system or some out-of-match out thing? I don't know, but I, I love this type of art style. Uh, ironically, in these types of games, not a huge fan of Pantheon taking on the more... I'll still play it, but, you know. Throne and Liberty's got a big showcase coming up November 2nd. We expect them to probably announce the release date for the Korean version of the MMO, probably targeting a December launch window. And we also saw that there were over a bunch of stats, right? Fun infographics, 100,000 plus deaths during the technical test. Uh, all under NDA, so and no leaks. I got no leaks to share for you, share with you on that one. So <laughs> make sure you watch their big showcase. Uh, Troy, I brought this to the show for Tori the Chicken. What is going on with? And Tori says that they put some additional info in the comments uh, to clarify for you. What is going on with Trackmania? Yeah, Trackmania is changing up their business model. They. Uh... They've been way too giving with uh, the things they've been giving away for free. So they got to be more realistic with the things that they give away and what they charge for, they say. So, you know, they're usually they, they give they give away the tracks for each season. Now you're only getting 10 tracks of the campaign that's going to be free along with the Royale and ranked modes. And the other 15 tracks for each season are going to be behind, be behind a paywall. They're also combining their 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 current standard $10 tier and their $25 tier access will be rolled into one new club access tier that is $19.99 per year. Now, you say $19.99, we're used to hearing it per month, right? $19.99 per year isn't all that expensive, but they are combining both of those tiers into just one tier, so there's no more $10 option for the year. It's only just 20 bucks or nothing. And, uh, you know, interesting take. You know, while the console, really, this is their quote, while the console release has surpassed our highest expectations in terms of both the amount of players and playing time, we need to adapt to the quantity of content given for free with the starter access to better match the way <laughs> the game is played. We also have to be realistic and compare the situation with the efforts made by the studio. We're not charging enough money for the stuff that we're giving away. Is yeah, and they said it went really doing. well on console, finally. Duh. You know, yeah. I've only wanted it on console forever to come back to console, I should say, forever. Uh, Tori providing an update saying that they dropped the lower paid tier and then also just adding a little clarification, which I will add here so the Trackmania fans won't be mad at me because I am a Trackmania casual at best. Uh, the changes to the free track somehow does not change how ranked works for free players, which means the free players will be able to play the other tracks, but only in ranked. 
you're unable to practice the tracks at all. This is one of the more confusing parts of the whole thing from Tori's perspective. The other user-created content, which is the vast majority of the game, no doubt, has always been behind a paywall with the occasional free user-created tracks and an arcade mode thing where free players can play on some specific top servers with whatever map rotation is on there. Also, uh, the move with the release of the new campaign to the ninth is a pretty bizarre move, although I'm pretty sure that they have their reasons. For most people, the $10 tier going to 20 will basically only give them access to skins. So... <laughs> I just imagine like some fat cat executive queue coming in with cigars going, how much we giving away for free? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do declare, let's charge a little more. <laughs> I wish they southern. I mean, that's just like the cartoon fat cat, right? <laughs> I do declare. <laughs> Stampede Racing Royale, which was supposed to go to <laughs> access in November. Uh, has now been delayed till sometime in the first half of 2024. <laughs> As if that's not a wide window or anything. Let's go to the weekly blob. <laughs> Troy, I do declare you're up, sir. You need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I do declare that I have to give a dub bomb to the new bard class in Warhaven. It's hilarious. I love the way that he runs. I love his voice lines. Uh, he was a lot of fun to play. The Bard class in Warhaven. Been having some fun checking him out. I, of course, own the premium pass in Warhaven because I'm a Warhaven sucker now. I'm a Warhaven Andy, so been having fun on that. Dub bomb to the Bard class. What you got, Q? Uh, I'm going to give a dub bomb to the Microsoft thing going through so we can eventually quit talking about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, since I've already explained it in detail earlier in our conversation, I can do so briefly here. A bomb to Rocket League taking away player trading. You dumb, son. You dumb. Uh, from the viewers, Zinc. Uh, by the way, I stopped to, besides Takao, who's who's always been Takao twenty three ninety nine. Uh, I've started taking away the numbers that YouTube assigns everybody in their comments. Thank you for your comments on YouTube and on MMO Bomb. By the way, you're an important part of the show. Don't forget your weekly bombs and question of the week answers in the comments below. Uh, Zinc says, World of Warcraft had mounts at launch, confirming what we were talking about last show. Tarin had running instead of mounts, but that was changed later to Kodo mounts. Thank you, Zinc, for confirming. I thought it did, but I just couldn't remember because it was so damn long ago. Go ahead, Q. <laughs> okay, I'm making a guess on this one. Uh Either your stock or your, your stock. But uh, November 2022 was not a season one release, but a fresh start server's introduction, which, if you ask me, tells nothing about the state of the game back then. Season one was April this year. Yeah, uh, totally right. And my correction on that. This is, you know, I wish there was somebody on this show, Q, that like really closely was involved and followed New World like invested in the game a little bit that could correct me when I say dumb things uh, and misattribute a launch to a particular window. I saw the same thing after the show, but during the show, <laughs> it did not register with me. Absolutely right. I did go back and check. Juristock, the correction is well-deserved. The player spike was not season one. It was fresh start servers. In April, when season one did come out, the server populations, the average player counts, I know that's not the best metric to use for player stuff, but uh, did go up a few thousand, but that was it. Right now, we are seeing New World starting its like kind of slow falling back down from the expansion. How far it'll go down will remain to be seen. It's at about uh, 50,000 in the last 24 hours right now. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, Nuno Silva, after quitting in the middle of Warlords of Draenor expansion, and wow, I came back for Legion which was an amazing expansion and a total shift from the rushed warlords of Draenor. Yeah, I really enjoyed Legion. I, I was kind of like the same boat. I played warlords of Draenor for about a subscription cycle. And then I was like, yeah, I'm done. Uh, and then Legion did the same thing for me. Uh, Alternus Stronks. 
Alternus Stronks. Alterna Stronks. As long as the server capacity, talking about New World, keeps being 2.5k, the players will keep leaving the game like crazy after every medium-sized patch, which makes me sad because the game is great, but dies and revives over and over after every patch. I think, Troy, you said something similar, that like this was kind of a death knell if they keep doing this. Yeah, the yeah the the freaking tremendous queues because there are more people in queue than can get into a server is absolutely a bad look and bad for business. Even I was super frustrated as a longtime New World player with the the super long queues, and it was like I was ready to abandon my company and everything to go to a different to a different server or try something new so I could actually play the game. So you know, in an age where you, you are Amazon, right? Like you're Amazon games. So you're a separate entity, but you're a part of one of the biggest server hosting companies in the world. We got to do better with that. I mean, that's what I was just thinking. If you're, if you're talking about Amazon, you have servers. This isn't like Square Enix <laughs> having to wait to go buy servers. You, do know, like, you guys do know you have AWS, right? Yeah. right. You got you got servers. Uh, question of the week: Last show, can an expansion by itself bring you back to an MMO that maybe you didn't initially enjoy? And if it's ever happened, let us know why. Uh, if not, why? Uh, to Cal twenty three ninety nine says, can an expan expansion bring me back by itself? Probably, but only if it changes a fundamental thing about the game that I didn't like. For example, I never played World of Warcraft outside of a few hours of the free trial years and years ago. Playing with KBM is just a no-go for me. Now, if Wrath, for Ra if Wrath, for example, came out and they said, native controller support is now live with this expansion, I would likely have played WoW for at least a little bit. Expansions tend to make major changes, don't tend to make major changes like that. So it's unlikely that a single expansion will ever bring me back into a game, but it is at least possible. At least possible. Question of the week this week. I want your take on what we were talking about earlier. Should gaming news sites like ours and obviously ones that are bigger uh, cover leaks? And I'm not talking about like YouTube creators that happen to have their own site, like a Yong Ye, like they kind of thrive on that type of reaction to leaks or reaction to drama and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that type of creator, like news sites, MMO Bomb, IGN, Massively, you know, that type of stuff. Should we be covering leaks? Let us know in the comments below what you think. And don't forget your weekly bombs while you're there. Dub bomb for something good, A bomb for something bad in the world of gaming or just life in general. Until next week, Troy, where can everybody find you? Hey, I've been streaming over on twitch.tv slash noobfridge every evening. Cute. Uh, still lurking on Twitter at Quentland. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man one More importantly, follow at MMO Bomb, so you'll know every time we post a new podcast, first look video, giveaway, interview, features, and news, and so much more. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers.